healing can only come through faith. Faith, not in my faith, but in your faith, the individual faith. I might have faith in Jesus to be saved. There's another man who does not have faith to be saved. He cannot be saved until he has faith. I have faith in Jesus. Maybe you do not have faith in Jesus, so that it isn't for you. Someone met me not long ago and said, Brother Brandon, the minister of a church who does not believe in divine healing. I will not criticize any church and any people to me. Everybody has a right just like we have the right to do anything that we want to do. And so teach whatever you think is right. If you do not believe in divine healing, then I would have a thought it believe it, I wouldn't be here. I'd be here with something else. But the minister said to me, he said, Brother Brandon, if you, if God had met you and gave you that to pray for the sick, so that you could go out here to the hospital and say, all you sick people, rise up and follow me out. And if you're truly a man sent from God, that everyone doesn't follow you out there. But I said, well, brother, was you called of God to preach the gospel of the saving grace of Christ? He said, I was. I said, then as you go down here to the Balloon. And all those drunk people and all, and all the army out there all saved. He said, I could have been believed me. I said, so could I. If they would believe me. But there it is. If you believe it's only by faith you believe. Our signs and wonders are done. Truly, they are prophetic gifts and so forth. Many people might not want to believe it. He said that man said, I do not believe it. I said, it doesn't bar you, it was for believers. That's what it meant for, not for unbelievers, but for those who believe. These signs shall follow them that believe. And that's how divine meaning is based on. Sometimes God does permit special things to happen to steal a faith of believers. We all believe in a major, but maybe some has a little more faith in it. A few nights, while I'm in the preliminary part of the services, I'll we're waiting for the crowd together. I take the privilege of doing just a little speaking. So as an order, so let the people kind of understand uh, what is the operation of the divine gift. Now the ministers and so forth, they over and over and over and over again. But yet, I feel like it's my duty to the people. And now some of them have to make them have to hold over a little while. I'm sorry to have to do that, but I would rather you know, hold over just for a little while, stay a little longer reading and reading and reading it, than to run through something and not know what you're doing and go on out and then be criticized in the meetings and so forth. If you were down here at Mayo Clinic or John Hopkins or something, they told you to stay there a month, you'd stay. You know, if you wanted to find it, put that door on. But this is where we're trying to get to the people, and anyone, divine healing can reach to every person. And every person that is a Christian has a right to pray for the sick. That's right. If there's any among you sick, call the elders. That's the deacons of the church. And then he said, confess your fault for the Lord, and pray one for the other. That's everybody. And I, any man, any person, you don't have to wait for some divine healing service comes into the city. That's not God's program. If you're sick, get some good Christian that help you pray so you have faith in that service. That's it. And that's all. Call your pastor. That's what he's for. To come and pray with you. If he's a godly man, which I believe that all true ministers are godly men. They're all born again Christians. They're godly people. That's true. And every one of them has a perfect life. Now, there may be things that God has added to the church to stimulate faith, but now I'm, I'm gone. Healing is gone. Healing ought to be more than it was before we come here. See? That's the purpose, is to get the people in the mind and the spirit of the latter days. We're in the latter days. You believe that? We are. Well, the world is in the spirit of the latter days, but the church is not in the latter days spirit yet. No words we may be in a potion of it, but God wants his church so in the spirit to live. He couldn't just any word of God and believe it. The latter days, a reign of the world, 
My, look at the place of eating, drinking, marriage, and marriage, and all the immorals and things in the world. The devil sure got his group in the latter days, spirit. But we ministers haven't got the church that in that spirit. And we must be in that condition in order to be caught away in the rapture when he sees That's why I remember one time trying to use him on a great lover of art and nature. I saw a picture and I was wondering how much that picture cost. And it had a value on it, the original picture. The day I seen the picture in the city where Christ, the unseen guest of the house, I went in and subscribed me. And it's just a photograph of all of the original masterpiece. And the masterpiece was stabbed way in the thousands and thousands of dollars. The other said, why, well, the man who was like, to take a man his lifetime to take that picture. And before any picture could be painted, or before it's painted, any masterpiece, first it has to go through the hall of critics. Pass all these cities, and then if it passes those cities, then it's hung in the hall of fame. The Bible is leading the nation. There you go. And they're taking all the church in over a million in person, right here, over a million in person. Now, we're in a lot of things to worry about. A million in person, right here. Now, come on, see the baptism of all the city, and pass it. A little church is not long as it's The people begin to laugh at it and make fun of it. The people begin to laugh at it and make fun of it. They call it your own. I'm a I was never been married at this church. 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 I was never been married at this I was glad to read anything, but for then I wasn't just that. Now, notice what the little church is pushed off in the house. It's all going to go. But all down through there, God was being in the kitchen. The day of one of these mornings, he put a hand in the hall of fame. And all those little lads and they were clear when she rolled out. I'm so glad I remember something else. I'm happy to be here. And to have people who believe in God and believe in and his miraculous work in his second coming again. Now, I wish to speak to you of all of uh, that little something here to help you along. And that is concerned divine If you do not approach divine need in Christ, you will fail to the future feet. And in many, many times we will want to be the first one. Live forever. Sin brought on death. 
So remember, statement is a, is the substance of death. A sin, sin is the first sin or sickness. Without sin, and there is one of sickness. So sickness, the first I want you to know is of the death. Now it's an old-fashioned thought. Now I'm going to see up here in a moment. But I, some of you modern uh, people with modern ideas might differ with this, but I'm not teaching my thoughts and teaching upon modern theory. I'm teaching upon the Word of God. And the Word calls these things spirit. When the dead and dumb spirit went out of them, he could speak and hear. Is that right? The doctor says that his nerves died in his ears. Well, he's dead. Like this man, for a lifetime, right of that one's dead. What the hell is that? Well, the nerves never died all over him. Well, the nerves just died in his ears. Or maybe he's dead. Well, what makes that dead? Why did the nerves die? Now, a doctor can only work upon what he can see or feel. That's the only thing that a doctor can look at a glass, or he can do a horoscope, an x-ray picture, or he can feel it in his hand. The human growth or whatever it is. Now that's what he has to work on. But when it comes to the nerves, or the end of that nerve, he knows the nerve is dead, but what? Kill. Now I say this upon the authority of the Word of God, it was a spirit which cannot be seen. Now, here it is. Just closely now. And a few people for a night or two will bear with me, and then when other people come in, you encourage them. And tell us how to be. Now, watch closely. Now, hey, here's my hand. I'm going to put a transparent band around it, say like that. Why my hand will begin to come dead. Circulation shut off. All right, I can't use that hand later on. I go to a doctor. A doctor looks and he say, now, uh, Mr. Brown, the only thing that I know is the nerves in your hand is dead. Well, I say, doctor, what killed it? Well, you say, well, I don't see no reason at all. Well, I look and it uh, just goes up so far. It's dead. I don't know. Something happened there. Well, he, if he couldn't see it or feel it and he's cut in there, I don't see no reason. But the nerves just don't operate beyond this line. They just died from there. Now, but the hand's dead. Now, what happened? Now, I'm going to take that back to the ear of a person, or the eye, or whatever, maybe in the part of the body. To my thought of this, and to the, I believe the Bible doctrine, Satan found that. And there has no circulation. Now, when I take this band off of here, I mean, I can't take the fingers and so forth. But here's the main You have to you can find the cure, you have to find the cause. Yeah. But here's the cause. And we take, and we know that. That to remove that, now that hand would be well right now, but it would be different. And circulation will begin to circulate, it will begin to hurt and burn and feel a little different and have to walk, you did, and it will be alright. If you give nature a chance, it will function correctly. Now, disease germs, that's just the power of Satan when it's bound to her. And when that spirit is cast off of there, nature will take care for itself. That person will go to here. There's a little, or whatever's wrong with them, they'll get well. Now, in my work, or my master, I deal with spirit all together. Nothing natural. It's all together spirit. And dear friends, I have to face this at the judgment bar of God. I want to go to heaven. I got a wife in heaven. I got a baby in heaven. I got loved ones there. Above all, I've got one who died for me. Jesus. He means just as much to me as he does to him every time. I can't help what critics say. I can only say what I know is the truth. And if you'll be truthful and sincere, God will bless it. God wants you to be truthful and sincere. Now, let's just find out what diseases are. I guess the number one enemy today, of course, is heart trouble. But that's not a germ disease altogether. But number one enemy in this your germs are cancers. Second is tuberculosis. 
Character is one of the major things. Let's speak of that just a moment. But you go in this way, I don't get a chance to turn my, I'm not turning my back to you, but I just can't sort of talk in the face of this microphone. But notice, a germ. What is this germ? Now we take a cancer. What is it first? Why is it growth? Tumor? Cataract? Water? There's growth. Is that right? And they become a latent cancer. Well, a growth is a multiplication of cells. And let's take down below that now. Below that growth, it was a, it's a growth, a group of cells, then it goes down to the germ. Well, what is a germ? A germ is a teeny little cell. Teeny little thing that can only be seen out of the natural eye of this microscope, glasses. Not below that thing. It's got life. It moves. It's got the life in it. Not below that in that germ. It becomes spirit. And there's only two resources that spirit can come from. That's either from God or the devil. There's no halfway between. There's no halfway Christian. You ever see a dumb sober man? You ever see a black white bird? You never seen a sinner saint. You're either a Christian or you're a sinner. That's what I like about you full gospel people. You cut the line down, you, you're on one side or the other. If you're born again, if I'm born a human, I'm a human. When you're born a Christian, you're a Christian. Now, that's your, let me just take this a little farther. Do you realize that you came from one little journey? That's right. Now, there it is. You came from one journey. There was a time when you wasn't nothing. Where did you say here, you there, any of you? Myself was one little germ. Well, the, the germ of life comes from the male sex. We know that. Here, for instance, we can have a... Well, it's, it's like spring. Birds lay their nest. And they lay their eggs. An old mother bird can lay her nest and lay it full of eggs. And she can lay that nest full of eggs without being with the male bird, too. And she could get on and warm those eggs and hover and stay there until she got so poor so she couldn't get off the nest. And not one of those eggs would hatch. They would lay right there and rock in the nest. Is that right? Because they haven't been with the male, she hasn't been with the male bird, and therefore they're not fertile. That reminds me of all of these old poor formal churches. You just hug them around and push them around and try to pass into the church. And that's what a rock made to the heaven with the male Christ Jesus. They're not believers in the first place. That's why what we need today is a good old fashioned clean out and get right with God. That's exactly what we need to do. in God. There it says, right or wrong. God grants the day when man and women will be what they claim to be. That's right. Now, notice. But when the, the male, see, God so ordained that. That's the way we reason, we believe that Jesus was of a virgin birth. You hear a lot of the full gospel churches, arguments concerning this. Look, I believe that Mary was a virgin. She knew nothing about any man. But Jehovah God overshadowed her and created in her womb a blood cell, which was by himself by creating power, and from that blood cell came the man Christ Jesus. And he was the blood of his father by birth and birth, and that's the blood that I'm preaching about tonight that goes holy and healed that unadulterated blood of the Son of God. And friends, if you don't believe that, then you can't be saved no other way but through the blood of Jesus Christ, which is the blood of his Father God, unadulterated, no, no sex mixed into it at all. It was a created birth. You believe that? Yeah. That's the true gospel, friends. Now, 